Hi there! Today I have a bonus for all my beloved subscribers out there. At the end of this video, I will link you to a very special playlist in my channel. In that playlist, you will see pre u lesson collaboration. I already found more than 10 pre u teachers from all around Malaysia and all these great teachers will be making lots and lots of video for you. Now, for now, there is already 68 videos and it is increasing. So, you will find videos on chemistry, biology, physics, accounts, and of course, my mathematics too. More videos will be added as the day pass. I hope this is worth some kind of love from you, right? If it do, please hit the like button in this video and do consider subscribing if you are not a subscriber yet. Well, let's carry on with our lesson. Today, I'm going to talk about proving trigonometric functions. Now, before we start, make sure for every time when you try to prove a trigonometric function, you have to know these identities. You have to memorize the trigonometric identities, the negative angle identities, the reciprocal identities. All these are very, very important before you can start proving trigonometric functions. After you have memorized the identities, the next thing is we must know the strategy. Now, the very first important strategy is work with one side at a time and manipulate it to the other side. Next thing is pick the most complicated side to work with. Well, our brain is not built to make things more complicated. We always try to find the simplest way to solve things. So we can make things more simple, but it is harder to make things complicated. So always work on the complicated side and move slowly to the easier part. The third strategy is Look for common terms that can be factored out and cancelled. Look for fractions that can be added or ways to use conjugate. Ways to simplify square root but never, never introduce square root into the equation. When you are stuck, try put everything in terms of sines and cosines. Sometimes, expressions are easier to work with when it is in this form. Once we know the strategy, let's look at what are the things that you should not do. Do not mix sides. Means you don't work with both sides at the same time. Do not square both sides of the equation. These are the big two no's that you, if you do it, I'm, I'm sure your answer will be wrong. So take note. Now, once we know all that, we also must know what are the types of equation that you need to prove. Sometimes they will give you complicated equals to simplified equation, like this one. You have a complicated side and you will have a simplified side. Now, if you have equation like this, we work from the complicated side to prove. I mentioned that just now. Now, let's look at the question. We, have, we will start from the complicated side. So, I have cos theta, cotangent theta, 1 minus sine theta, minus 1. We will change this to sine theta and cos theta. So our tangent is that. 
So our cotangent will be cos theta over sin theta. So let's put it in first. Now once that is done, I'm going to bring this denominator down. So it will end up cos times cos. I got cos square theta. This sign, I bring it over. So it will be sin theta over here multiplied by 1 minus sin theta. Okay, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this denominator and multiply with negative 1 here, minus 1. So what I do is this sin theta, I multiply with 1 and this one with a sin theta. Okay, I will end up with sin theta sine theta minus sine squared theta and all this will multiply with 1 so I'll have negative the whole set. Once that is done, I'm going to open up the bracket so this will be cos squared theta negative negative will be plus I bring the sine squared theta over and minus sine theta so I have minus sine theta here. The next thing is, I'm going to use the identity sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals to 1. So this is going to replace cos squared theta plus sine squared theta here. So I will end up something like this. Okay, so it will be 1 minus sine theta over sine theta multiplied with 1 minus sine theta. Now, is there anything I can simplify? Yes. I can simplify 1 minus sine theta over 1 minus sine theta. So what is left is 1 over sine theta over here. So this is actually 1 over sine theta is cosecant theta. So that is my answer on the left hand side. Okay, the second type of question that you might get is complicated equals to complicated. So you have something like this. You have a complicated side equals to a complicated side. So to solve this type of question, we work from both sides independently and we reassemble. So of course, for this question, let's do one side first. So I will start from the left-hand side. So I have cotangent x, tangent x. So cotangent x is cos x over sine x. And tangent x is sine x over cos x. I make it into sine and cos. Once that is done, I will cross multiply both of them. So I will have cos x over here and sine x times sine x. So I have that and I will combine the fraction. Okay, once that is done, I will use the formula again sine squared x plus cos squared x equals to 1. So I will transform this into 1 over sine x cos x. Once that is done, I will separate them into 2 and I know cosecant x is equal to 1 over sine and secant x is 1 over cos. So I will put them together and that's my right hand side. Now, if this is too complicated for you, let's check out the other side. Let's say if I have right hand side, cosecant x secant x. So I knew just now is 1 over sine x and secant x is 1 over cos x. Once that is done, I will have combined them combined. So I have 1 over sine x cos x followed by changing this 1 to cos squared x plus sine squared x. Then moving separating them into two so cos squared x over sine x cos x and sine squared x over sine x cos x then i simplify cos squared x and cos squared x so i have cos x over sine x and sine squared x can be simplified with sine x here so i have sine x over cos x so that will give me cotangent x plus tangent x. That's my left hand side. If you look at the working that I have here, basically whatever you see at the bottom here is equivalent to the top and when you work 
backwards and you work it from the other side, there is similarity in them. Okay, so let's say if you are stuck with complicated equation, work on both sides and rearrange uh, them so that at the end they will uh, combine, the two working will combine and create one perfect answer. Because if you notice, they are MOOC, when you are moving on the from the left hand side, you will get this type of working. And you when you move from the right hand side, you will get this working. So they some way somehow they will combine and they will create the perfect answer. So if you get complicated uh question, just move from both sides and you will get it done very fast. Okay, the next type of question is simplified and simplified. So for this type of question, for example, you have this one. It looks so simplified. You don't even know how to start from this side or start from this side because there's nothing you can simplify there. So for this type of question, we have to make one side complicated. Either we add or subtract the same equation. Or we multiply or divide with the same equation. Now, let's check this out. If I have equation like this, I will start from the left-hand side. So when I get this left-hand side, I will try to make it more complicated. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator with the conjugate of the denominator. So I'm going to use 1 minus cos uh, theta over 1 minus cos theta. So I'm going to expand this. I'm going to uh, multiply it over 1 minus cos theta squared. And the bottom, I open it up. I will get 1 minus cos squared theta. Once that is done, then I have to think about this identity. So I need 1 minus cos squared theta. So I have uh, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals to 1. So 1 minus cos squared theta is sine squared theta. So I'm going to change that. Once I'm done here, I can actually find the square root for both of them. Okay. Once that is done, I will notice that my answer, I have a modulus uh, on the numerator and denominator. So I'm going to get rid of the numerator uh, modulus on the numerator because 1 minus cos theta is always a positive answer. So we can drop the absolute value sign from the 1 minus cos theta, but the denominator the absolute value for sine theta, I maintain the denominator because sine theta can be positive and can be negative values. So that is equals to my right hand side. What if you can't decide and you notice that you do not have any, uh, you can't work from the left hand side, you can work from the right hand side, then you have to use formula. So what formulas? Well, you in trigonometry, we have the trigonometric identities. We have the compound angle formula. We have the double angle formula. And sometimes we have to use the half angle formula. So apply the formula into our question. For example, if I have something like this. Well, if I have sine 3a, so I will have sine 3a and I will have to think of a formula that I can uh, break this sine 3a out. So this side is simplified. So you have sine in both sides, but you have sine 3a. So I'm going to use the additional formula. Okay, sine a plus 2a. That will give me this formula. So I'm going to open this up. So I will have sine A cos B. So this is my B, so 2A. So sine A cos 2A, cos A sine 2A. So I have 
the following the formula. Once that is done, I have to think, how can I simplify this further? So, other formulas will be coming in. So, cos 2a is 1 minus sine squared a. And because inside the right hand side, I notice there is only sine. So, for the, I, that's why for cos 2a, I chose the one with the sine. And the, for the sine 2a, I will have 2 sine a cos a. So, I'm going to put that in into cos 2a. I change it to 1 minus sine squared a. And cos a, I will change it to 2 sine. Uh, for this one, sine 2a, I will change it to 2 sine a cos a. Right. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to expand everything. Okay, so sine a times 1 sine a times 2 sine squared a. So I have 2 sine cube a here. And cos a multiply in, I will have 2 sine a cos squared a. Once this is done, then my identity formulas are coming in. Now I have to change uh, some because I have to change all the cos into sine because here I don't see any cos. So my cos squared theta is equals to 1 minus sine squared theta. So the place for cos squared theta, I'm going to change to 1 minus sine squared theta. Once that is done, I'm going to expand this again. So I will expand this sine 2 sine a times 1 and 2 sine a times sine squared a. So I have this. It's time to rearrange and get the final touch. Okay, so I have 3 sine a and then minus 4 sine cube a. So that is where it comes from. So that will be the right hand side. Okay, now let's check out this question. I have tangent and I need, I have 2 tangent a minus sine 2 a over 2 cotangent a minus sine 2 a. This is the complicated side, right? So I'm going to prove this to become tangent to the power of 4a. So I need to work with formulas. So first thing first, tangent theta equals to sine theta over cos theta. So I'm going to change it there. And cotangent theta equals to cos theta over sine theta. I'm going to change it here. Okay, so I'm going to also going to change sine 2a into 2 sine a cos a. I'm going to put them all in there carefully. Okay, once that is done, once that is done, I'm going to combine the cos a with uh, over this side. So I'm, I'm, I'm multiplying because I want to combine this fraction on top and combine this fraction at the bottom. All right, it is combined. Okay, once it is done, then I see, okay, I have 2 sine A here and I have 2 sine A there. So, which means that can be factorized out. And I have 2 cos A here and 2 cos A over this side. So, that definitely can factorize out. So, I'm going to factorize them out. And what is left is 1 minus cos squared A on the right hand on that part. And 1 minus sine squared A on this part. The next thing is I'm going to bring this to, the, to make it into a proper fraction. Because I do not want to, them to have such complicated situations. So, I have sine to... 2 sine a over cos a. I will write it down here. This one is at the denominator. So when I bring it over, it will be sine a and 2 cos a at the bottom. These two I will maintain. So 1 minus cos squared a over 1 minus sine squared a. Well, now I'm going to need the formulas again. So I'm going to change both of them. So I have uh, 1 minus cos squared a. So that will be sine squared a. So I have them there. And the other one will be cos squared a because I have 1 minus sine squared a. Okay, everything is well prepared. 
and looks very promising because I'm going to need a uh, sine power of 4 on top and sine power of a uh, cos power of 4 at the denominator. So that is what I got. So once I get that, so I my tangent theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta, which means this can be changed to tangent to the power of 4a. That's my right hand side. Okay, I'm done. So, next video, I will talk about how you can solve trigonometric functions. Stay tuned and let's check out the playlist that I mentioned just now. See you. Bye.